in the boarding schools around the 1950s, they started to get a little bit less strict. They were allowing Indians to grow their hair again, and you could you could sing Indian, yeah, and you could you could you know, Indian dance at the schools and. And the only thing, though, is that by this time, by the 1950s, most Indians in America and Canada could no longer speak their language. So when they composed songs, they were composed in English. Yeah. So um, in the boarding schools, you know, you know, the, a lot of these schools, they're intertribal, yeah? There's several tribes in these schools. One of the biggest ones was in um, Utah, in a place called Brigham City, Utah. It's north of Salt Lake City, I think. I think close, somewhere close to Ogden or someplace like that. And Brigham City used to be a military uh, base. It's huge. Yeah, it's it's. It's like a little city all itself. This, yeah? They transformed it into a boarding school. And so you have uh, Nez Pierce Indians, Crow Indians, Northern Cheyenne Indians, Blackfoot Indians, Navajos, Apaches, and Hopis, and Indians from California, and you know, Cal- uh, Washington, Oregon, uh, Nevada. You know, the Ute Indians are there, Paiute. It is just huge. Yeah, the, this high school must have had several thousand students in it. They're all from different tribes. And um, I I didn't go to school there, but I was part of a music um, honors band in, called the First National All Indian Honors Band. And... Um, this was a, a select group of Indian musicians in high school that were chosen um, through audition, and we were to go to this Brigham City uh, intertribal, oh, it's called Intermountain Intertribal High School, and uh, we were to go there for one week and rehearse with these other musicians yeah, from Alaska and other parts of America. So there were 200 of us, and so after that week of rehearsals, we took a charter jet, so, you know, the, a, a jet that's filled nothing but with Indians. <laughs> I bet you'll never see that again, yeah? <laughs> the, all the passengers are Indians. <laughs> I think it was a DC-10 or something. It was a really huge, huge jet. And we flew from Salt Lake City nonstop to Dulles National Airport, International Airport in Washington, D.C. And we performed at various places in Washington, D.C., including the White House. At that time, Jimmy Carter was the president. Yeah. So we performed there. We performed at Smithsonian Institute and some other places. And it was really nice. Yeah, It was a nice experience. But this intermountain, intertribal school, we were there for a week to rehearse. And walking through the school is just amazing. Yeah, I mean, you you come around the corner and you hear a group of students singing 49 songs. Yeah, and you go around another corner, there's another drum group singing other 49 songs. And uh, these these songs they have the drum beat of of the heartbeat, you know, like a love song and rabbit dance song, but they're sung in English. And it was just amazing, yeah. This this was 1977, and back then, you know, us teenagers, us Indians, we were proud to be Indian, yeah. We had long hair, and and um, you know, we were proud of who we were. Unlike today's Indians, yeah. Today's young Indians, they're all trying to be black. They're all trying to be Mexican. They all want to be this. In, you know, inner city gangster hip hip hop bullshit, yeah, and, and and everybody has short hair and they're wearing all these sports t-shirts and, and and pants low like that, like they have a diaper that needs to be that you know hasn't been changed in two days. 
they, they don't even want to be Indian, it seems like, yeah? the, the Indian youth of today. So I'm glad I come from the generation that I belong to because I had long hair. You know, we were proud to be Indian. We were, you know, we might have been a little bit radical in our thinking, but we weren't. We were happy to be Indian. Yeah, and it, it was so cool because you could hear the different languages yeah, in in the school, and you go, you hear the Nez Pierce guys talking Nez Pierce. You hear the Blackfoot guys talking Blackfeet and the crow boys talking crow and and on and on and on like that. It was so cool to see that. Yeah, I'm I'm I really like that. Yeah, that's one of my favorite memories from my my teenage years. So that's how it was, yeah? So let's go back in time. Let's go to the 1950s. 1950s um of course I'm not born yet, but um, the boarding schools, like I said, they were allowing the the uh, children to, um, I mean, the teenagers, they were allowing them to grow their hair long. They were allowing allowing them to uh, bring their drums to school. They were allowing the students to Indian dance. Yeah, and and they were even allowing the kids to form clubs, yeah, dance clubs and and stuff like that. So it was a good time to be Indian, yeah. And uh, so um, the sad part, though, was that by the 1950s, like I said, most Indians did not know how to speak their language because of that earlier boarding school experience when their grandparents were tortured and beaten and murdered and raped and molested and and uh you know they didn't want their children to go through that so they didn't when they grew up they didn't teach their children the language and in many cases they didn't even teach them the culture yeah so that second generation of boarding school students they don't know anything but they still got abused too because they're indian and that kept happening yeah, until about the 1950s, it started to soften up a little bit. I mean, they were still hard, but at least you could sing Indian. Yeah, at least you could make a drum. At least you could dance Indian. At least you could grow your hair long. So in the 1950s, they started growing their hair long. And um, but the only thing missing was the language. Yeah, that because that was beaten out of their grandparents. So um, they started this style of singing called 49. And nobody knows why it's called 49. To this day, nobody knows why this is called 49. I have no clue myself. This is an inner tribal song style, okay? There's, there's no, uh, it doesn't belong to any tribe at all. A lot of people think it began in Oklahoma, which could be true, yeah. But a lot other people say no, it developed in the the West, in the the intertribal, that intermountain intertribal school in Brigham City, Utah. Some people think it started there. Nobody really knows where it started, but the reality is it did, yeah. And in this style. It's based on the rabbit dance songs, okay, that style. But the what's really, it has a very unhealthy beginning, yeah? In the 49, what it basically is, is everybody meets at a secret, secret, not sacred, but secret location. And they bring bottles of wine and... They pull out the drum, make a campfire, yeah? They have a, like a bonfire, and then they sing Indian all through the night and get drunk at the same time. So when you hear the words to these 49 songs, these early 49 songs, they have things like, um, their lines are like, I don't care if you're, if you're married, yeah, uh, I'll... I want to um, love you anyway, you know, things like that. And so it, it's kind of, 
they have unhealthy themes. Yeah, the words are unhealthy. The um, it's 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 not it's not a good theme. Yeah, because see what's happening is somebody is getting some girls drunk until they pass out, and then once they pass out, then they 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 take turns on them. Yeah, they they gang rape them is what's happening, and this is part of the forty nine scene. So these these parties always happen out in the country someplace, and uh, and 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 it, alcohol is always involved. Yeah, and they they start singing these songs and and they do round dancing. Yeah, that's a that's a, uh, round dance is also is is actually a nice thing. Yeah, round dancing was invented by Lakota people. They called it a friendship dance. Yeah, it's a, it's it's really a nice thing to see, and that comes from Lakota people. And the Forty Nine crowd, they took that, and um, and they put incorporated incorporated it into their style. Yeah, so a lot of times you have round dancing that happens around the fire. Yeah, as people are, you know, singing Forty Nine songs. And like I said, a lot of these songs really have unhealthy themes. Yeah, they're they're really. Um, um, it's like it's saying it's okay to cheat on your girlfriend or on your wife. These songs are saying it's perfectly okay to go out and have sex with another woman. You see, it's it's perpetuating an unhealthy lifestyle. And this 49 style was born with a bottle of wine. So the, I often wonder if the word 49, the reason why it, 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 it's called 49, is what does that have to do with wine? See, I think there's a connection because there's always these, uh, you know, these, these uh, you know, let, let's get a bottle of wine and go 49. Kind of thing, yeah. So it it is it is it is about it 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 it. Uh, there's a lot of gang rapes that happen. Yeah, the girls they they pass out. Yeah, they get the girls passed out, and then they take them someplace, and everybody stands in line, and they call this a train. Yeah, so they say, yeah, let's let's uh, let's train so and so. All right, I'll go with her, and then. You know, and, and, and I'll be with her and make out with her and make it look like, you know, I'm going to be with her. Then when she passes out, I'll come get you guys. This is what this is what they talk about. This is part of that lifestyle. So it's a gang rape. So then you have a bunch of, bunch of Indian girls getting pregnant and they don't know who the fathers of, of, their, of the children are. Maybe they do because the child might represent this guy, but what if it was two brothers that fucked her? Yeah? What if it was two brothers and an uncle that fucked her? Do you see what I mean? This kind of this kind of shit happened was regular. This was a regular thing at forty nines. So the forty nine culture is really a man's thing. It's abusive. It's very disrespectful to to women and so a lot of these these songs they're they're they reflect that yeah that i don't care if you're married i'm coming uh I'm, i'll be standing behind your house so come see me there's 49s that have words like that now some people think they're funny yeah and, and you know Especially if the guy's funny looking, yeah, they might say that, but then that's not the reason why. The reason why is because these songs were created at these parties, at these part, these get drunk parties, and let's go gang rape a bunch of a bunch of girls. This is where that that forty nine style comes from, and the people still do this in the south. Yeah, the southern drums still do this. The southern drums, they sit with a bottle of wine at their drum. I'm not kidding. I've been to Denver Powwow. Yeah? 
I've been to Denver March in 2000, and there were some southern drums there. And sure enough, they're sitting there, and you can see the brown paper bag. They're drinking wine. Yeah, and and the northern drums don't do this too much, but it's the southern drums that they, they see the drum just as a drum. But the northern tribes, they see some some northern tribes see the drum as the heartbeat of Mother Earth, so they're a little bit more uh, respectful to the drum. A lot of northern tribes, like Lakota people, they see the drum as a person that you never leave the drum by itself. And if you have to leave the drum by itself, there's something you're supposed to do to the drum. But you don't just leave it laying there and then and then everybody walks away. That's a drum tradition. That's a northern drum tradition. <coughs> Excuse me. But the southern drums, they don't do that. Yeah? <coughs> Excuse me. They don't have that kind of a tradition. So they see the drum in a different way. So I can understand why a lot of people think that this 49 style started in Oklahoma because a lot of southern tribes are there. Yeah, I can understand that some people would think that. So as for me, I don't know. I really don't know. And I really don't know why it's called 49. Some people speculate. <laughs> Excuse me, they'll say, well, maybe there were 49 guys there. Maybe it started in 1949. Maybe, you know, <laughs> nobody really knows. Because some people will say, nah, we were singing this song before 1949. So you see, they nobody really knows. But at these boarding schools, this is this is where it started, yeah, these 49s. Because they would, somebody would buy a bottle of wine and they'd go outside someplace outside the school and they'd get drunk and, you know, s start singing these songs and people would come up with really nice melodies but really shitty lyrics. And when school is out, everybody goes back to their own reservation and they're bringing songs with them. And then they hit the powwow circuit and they're traveling to different communities every weekend. And, and Saturday night or sometimes Friday and Saturday night after the powwow ends, for the evening, they get bottles of wine and they find some place out in the country, maybe by a lake or a dam or a river, somewhere way out where the cops can't come, and they, they bring out their drums and they start 49ing. And then they have, like I said, you know, a lot of gang rapes happen and, and uh, lots of shit is happening, lots of bad shit is happening yeah, at these 49s. And then Saturday... You know, the powwow doesn't start till 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So they have time to sleep, get up with hangovers, grab their bottles of wine and head to the powwow arena and start drink, trying to drink off their hangover. Yeah, laughing because, yeah, you know what so-and-so did. And, hey, check her out. Did you guys fuck her last night? Yeah, we had her. Man, she was really good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and see, this is the kind of talk that happens at around the drum you see it's very very disrespectful to women yeah it's 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 very incredibly disrespectful to women and as far as i'm concerned if one of the genders is being disrespected disrespected then this is not a good thing so the 49 style is something I never liked. Yeah, that that's I never I never liked this. And it's not a good atmosphere. Yeah, it, it it's it's not a good atmosphere at all. And it's I think a lot of people um they go there to forget their problems, yeah, to get drunk and and you know, and and, and fuck some passed out girl and singing these songs. So the 49 style is something I'm not crazy about. And this I, I but I, people need to know that there's a this really has a an ugly history. Yeah, that this is not a traditional style. This style was born 
in the boarding schools. And you have to remember, in the boarding schools, there was a lot of abuse going on there. So maybe maybe that's why. I don't know. Yes, but it is a style that is popular. So when you go to these big powwows, they still do that. Yeah, I went to Gathering of Nations in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That was one of the worst powwows I ever went in my life. This, this absolutely bullshit. That to me, that's that's that is disrespectful as hell. Um, trying to fit in as many Indians in the hole as possible. This is a linear thinking, for one thing. And the other thing is there's a lot of drinking going on. A lot of drinking. I mean, we got a hotel at one of these uh, one of these fancy hotels. We got a hotel room there. And, you know, you could just hear people in the elevator talking. Where's, where's 49 at? Go to room 108. And, yeah, there's going to be one there at night. And there's going to be another one on the... And uh, t- uh, 210 or something like that. All right, I check both of them out. So they're already doing it, yeah. And the same thing is happening. Girls are passing out, and guys are taking turns on them in the hotel. The, and this happens in the south more frequently than it does in the north. Yes, yeah, so it's it. I think to me it's a sign that shows how much the southern tribes have lost their culture. That's that that alcohol seems to play more of a role in their lifestyle than it does in the north. I'm not saying the north is all goody good. No, 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 no. Not at all. Because there's still 49s in South Dakota. Yeah, People still do that in South Dakota, just not as much as they do in, as in Oklahoma, and New Mexico, and Arizona, Southern California, Texas, there it's it's worse. Utah, Southern Utah, um, Nevada, these are the Southern drums. Yeah, in Florida, this is really, really. I don't really like to go to those powwows at all because to me, it's not the real thing. <laughs> But that's just the the way I am. Yeah, maybe maybe that's a little bit nationalistic to say because I'm from the north. Yeah, but hey, I I prefer to um, you know, to 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 be more healthy. So for me, I like the love song aspect and the rabbit dance. And to me, those are more healthy. Yeah, those encourage feeling good. Whereas the 49 is like, hey, let's see how many women we can fuck. You see what I mean? The 49 is really not a traditional thing. It's, it's totally contemporary. The 49 started, like I say, around somewhere in the 1950s is when that style started. So it's 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 something I'm not crazy about. Yeah, But it is, when you're looking at a culture, you got to look at everything. Yeah, and I on this show I present native culture, I present Lakota culture, and I show you what I can, what I know, and sometimes this is not good. Yeah, like this forty nine thing. This is this is really not a not a healthy thing. The forty nine culture is more along the lines of the elk man. Yeah, the elk man is a man who who is charismatic. He um he, he enchants women, he, um, but he, he has only one thing in mind, and that's to use the woman yeah, for his, his uh, selfish desires. In typical Alkman stories, the Alkman comes into the village, and right away the first, you know, the women start noticing him, and uh, so people are thinking maybe this has to do with pheromones or something like that. And um, they become attracted to him. And and then they, and even some married women, they just throw themselves at, at him. And they all, you know, they all want, um, you know, they want him for their man. <laughs> even married women <laughs> will do this. Yeah. And, um, so in one story 
they 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 want to um the men are having are, are you know they're getting very upset because their daughters are are being used by him yeah them sexually and they ask him to leave but he won't he won't leave because the women are protecting him yeah the women won't let him leave cuz he'll act like okay I'll go then and then the women say no 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 come back and then they get mad at their their fathers and their husbands and brothers and so forth and um so they don't know what to do yeah so they de- in this one story they devised a a plan where they're going to um get rid of him yeah um so they what they're going to do is they're going to play a game called shinny and this is actually something like lacrosse it it it's this is a i know that's a french word but it comes from the tribes on the east they played this game yeah the um six nations the Haudenosaunee um they played this game and it's funny how come lakota people have it and that that goes to show you that there was some traveling <laughs> back then yeah that what happened most likely was that some some indians from the six nations Haudenosaunee and some lakota people obviously met some place and they probably met at one of these trading places in north america there were trading places where you know when you go there you have to put your weapons down and you have to be in peace and if you violate that peace they will kill you and these trading places you know you people take their goods there and trade with other indians and they use sign language to communicate with each other so this is why you find these uh concho shells in south dakota when really they're from where california or something like that <laughs> yeah you find turquoise in south dakota you know the this turquoise would be like you know several several thousand years old that shows you there was trading happening between different tribes yeah so and a lot of these trading areas it, tribes would work out their animosity towards each other by by playing certain games competitive sports yeah and so this is how the lakota people learned this game that these uh six nations people were doing in the Haudenosaunee and they took that back to lakota country and called it shinny it's the same game yeah it's, it shows you that there was a lot of things happening yeah between different indians of different tribes anyway in this elkman story the lakota people decided you know they're going to play a game of shinny on a really 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 windy day and they they marked out an area and an open space and they were waiting until the, it was uh, a windy day would come a really really windy day okay so this was the plan the plan was that they were going to um when when it gets really windy they were going to kick the ball not kick hit the ball clear on the other side of the community the the camps the circle and and the the men were going to surround the elk man and they were going to use their shinny sticks and really you know drag it through the ground so that bunch of dirt will come in the air and the wind blows it all over creating a little dust storm and while that storm was while this dust was in the air the o- other men were going to drag this man into the trees and they were going to cut his legs off cut his arm off and cut his head off so that w- that there would be six parts yeah and e- there were two men assigned to each part and they were supposed to run you know away and then split into different directions yeah one one group has an arm yeah and <laughs> and a and a, and a, and a leg and a head the torso and the other arm and the other leg so six groups yeah they were supposed to run non-stop for 3 days 
and then on uh, then on the fourth day they were going to rest and then dig a hole that's as deep as the man and then they were supposed to burn that body part and throw the ashes in that hole yeah and and put some sage on it and then cuz sage is like cleansing yeah so they were supposed to put some sage on top of the ashes and then bury it that's what that's what the plan was okay so <laughs> it's just vicious yeah <laughs> so this is so they waited yeah they waited and sure enough the day came it was really windy so they said the men were saying hey let's play a shinny game and they invited this guy to play with him and and he said no no i'd rather not he said and the all the girls were saying yeah oh, come on you know we want to see you run and we want to see your legs when you run and and your arms when you swing the stick and you know so they're just you know focusing on his physical features and so they said he said oh okay so he went out there and they played and they and then finally they were able to hit the ball clear across the fields and the plan went accordingly yeah everything went according to plan those men surrounded him and they hit the ground so causing this big dust storm so the women on the other side of the field they couldn't see what was happening so then they drug this man into the trees and they cut his head off they cut his arms off and his legs yeah and one sto- one version of the story says they cut his penis off so it was seven parts yeah that's how one version goes but they cut him in pieces okay <laughs> we'll just be, leave it like that and then they each piece was uh, two men were assigned to take each piece and just run run away the opposite direction yeah for four or three days and then to rest on the fourth day and then to dig this hole yeah the the hole that's as deep as the man as as his height yeah and then they were supposed to burn the body part and they did that they threw the ashes in the hole then they put sage on top of it the sage is cleansing and then they threw you know they buried it yeah they they put all the dirt back into the hole and uh, meanwhile back at that game you know the they after the dust settled the other men that were still there they came back and and they said well i guess the game's over so the women were saying hey where did the where did that guy go meaning the elk man and they said well he hit the ball way over there and he went to go get it and uh he never came back, so I don't know. Maybe he went away. So the the women were all sad, and they they were all blaming blaming each other. It's because of you. That's why he left. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they were just mad. Yeah. They were sad because he's gone, and then the women were blaming each other. Yeah. They were blaming each other that that maybe that's the reason why he left. So. That was it, yeah. And then these the men, nobody didn't even notice that these men were gone. Yeah, these tw- twelve to fourteen men were gone. Their women didn't even care, because <laughs> they were just thinking about the elk man, yeah. And so uh, maybe it's probably about three days later these men came back, and they were just acting like nothing happened, yeah. And the, their women didn't even care. They weren't even happy to see their men. Yeah, they 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 were missing that elk man. And so um, everything seemed to go back to normal. Yeah. And <laughs> about a week later, uh, here comes this man coming into the village, and everybody's wondering who is that guy. And he's carrying a, a shinny stick. And he has the ball, yeah. And he he comes to the men, and he says, "Hey, I finally found that ball." He said, and here it was the elk man. He came back. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "So we finished the game," and so the women were all happy again because he came back. Yeah. 
And so the men, they had to go along, yeah, because they, they didn't want to say, hey, I thought we cut you in pieces and burned you. See, they, they didn't want to say that because then they, they would, you know, then their women would know what they did. So they had to go along with the elk man. And so they, they went back out to the field and they proceeded to play the game. Yeah. And then after the game, the man had his way with more women. So the situation was even worse than it was before. So the story goes to show you that nothing at that time could stop the elk man. Even their their holy people, they would try to do things to stop him. They couldn't. They could do nothing could stop this guy. So this kind of activity went on for thousands of years. Yeah. Finally, let's go back to the story though. Yeah. Finally, one he decided, you know, that he wanted to marry one of these young girls. And she really felt all proud, yeah, because he chose her over all these other girls. So the other girls were all jealous and everything and and um the the young girl, she was in love with him and she wanted to marry him. And um, but you know the man said that she she would have to come to his camp, and she said sure of course and and everybody all the other men were just happy that finally he's gonna leave. Yeah. So then um, the the man and woman were married and and um, remember in Lakota society marriage is simple. Yeah. Should we live together? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's basically it, yeah. And the community has to approve it too. And so she and she wanted to marry him, yeah. So, so they left, and they traveled for several days, and then they got to this really big body of water that was moving really fast. And the elk man said, um, "Get on my back," he said, "and I'll I'll swim across." So she said, okay, so she got on his back and put her arms around his neck and he started to go across the water. And then as they were getting wet, he, she noticed, you know, that his hair in the back of his head, it parted. And she saw something move under the hair. And she thought, is that a bug? Yeah. And uh, so she pushed the hair away and here was the eye. It, it blinked at her, yeah, and she, <laughs> she cleared more hair, and here there was a second face. He had a second face on the back of his head, yeah, and the, 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 another mouth, yeah, and that mouth smiled at her, and both eyes winked at her, and she really, she really got shocked, yeah, and, and, and she just pushed the hair in front of you know, she pushed the hair over the face and she said to herself, I'm just imagining this. See? She pushed away a warning sign. She rationalized it. Yeah, because she was focusing on, but he's 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 a beautiful man and I love him. So I'm just imagining things. It's just my fear. I'm just imagining things, she would say. And then she would look away to make sure she wouldn't see it again. Yeah, so then they get to the other side, and then they start walking back to, to uh, his camp. And then when they get there, they see all these skeletons, these these human skeletons. They're laying all around his teepee. And she says, she knows they're human. Yeah. But she says that, oh, look at all the animals that he's killed. He must be a really good hunter. And look at, it's funny how the bones fell. They almost look like they're human. See, she's rationalizing. She knows they're human, but she doesn't want to admit it. Because she's too enchanted. She's addicted to this guy. Yeah, and so then... Uh, he takes her inside, and there's an old woman cooking, and she's make, getting ready to make a soup, and she's putting, you know, some uh, wild turnips in the soup, and um, 
And uh, she, she says, oh, good, you're almost, you're here for dinner, she says. And the elk man says, this is my mother. And uh, and the the girl um, goes in, yeah, and then he said, the elk man says he's going to go gather some firewood, some more firewood. And so he leaves, and then um, the um the 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 mother says um you have to leave he said he's going to eat you so the mother's trying to help her yeah and so then he she says go this way and this way and this way and he won't find you and then so she takes off yeah but the elk man tracks her down and finds her and takes her back to the camp and and then he he puts her in, and the mother has to pretend like she didn't know. Yeah, so the mom says, "Oh, I didn't even know she was gone. My hearing is really bad, so I didn't even hear her leave." So the elk man ties her down. Yeah, he ties her to the ground, so she won't move. And then um, the man takes off. the The lady says she has to get something outside, so she goes out. And then at the at the um, other end of the teepee, there's two beavers that they, you know, they cut their way inside the teepee. They untie this girl, and they're they're able to help her get out. Yeah, and they take off and they go to this. They go back to this river, and they know that the alchemist is coming. Yeah, they they he starts running towards them, and so this is what they do. One beaver starts to build a dam, so he's in front, yeah, and so she's behind him. As he's building the dam, there's a beaver. The second beaver is behind her, and he's taking it apart and throwing the sticks to the guy in front. This is how they cross the river. And this, on this day, the water is moving even faster than it was before. So this must be by some rapids, yeah. And so the elk man jumps in the water and he gets caught on something, yeah, on the bottom, and and he uh, is not able to catch them. And so the beavers escort her back to her people, and they and then they leave her, yeah. So she walks back and and uh, she's learned, uh, she survived an elk man experience. And everybody comes running to her, and they're happy she lived because, you know, the older ones know that, you know, that she probably would have never came back. So she survived. Yes, she survived an elk man experience. See, he was going to eat her, literally. So this is all symbolic of of addiction, yeah, addicting, uh, becoming addicted to a false idea of love, and you're focusing only on the physical. And this is what can happen: that you will be abused, you will be, uh, you will become a codependent, and you will become a victim when you when you fall for these kind of men. Yeah. So this is this is a typical Elkman story. Now there is all kinds of Elkman stories. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but this is one of them. So this is uh, it's supposed to be teaching young girls about when you're looking for a man. You know, this is what's going to happen if you just focus on on his outward appearance. If you just focus on his voice, the way he talks, the, the, um, you know, if you just focus on those things, and you don't even take the time to know him, you know, this you could be going into danger. Yeah, and and he's gonna know what to say to enchant you. Yeah? He's gonna tell you things you want to hear. So if you have low self-esteem. And a man is telling you, oh, you're the most wonderful, blah, 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 all this kind of thing. See, he's he's fishing you. Yeah, He's going to slowly lure you in until he devours you. And you become his victim. Yeah, that's, that's how the alchemists work. 
So this happened for thousands of years. This Alchemist was doing all these things until one day he came into the wrong village. <laughs> and this is the story I was talking about two nights ago. Yeah, in this story where um this guy um was being taught by an elk and taught how to to um he he was taught how to use this medicine to heal people who are hurting emotionally. Yeah, that this the village he was in, one day an elk man walked into this village and this elk this other guy is called the elk dreamer. That is not the same thing as an elk man. Okay? So he walked into the camp and immediately the first people to notice were the women. So they started, you know, going towards him and the elk dreamer went over there too. And, and this elk man was really stunned because this was the first time a man came out to meet him. Yeah? So the the ma the elk dreamer went through the the women, told them, you know, get away, hunta hunta, yeah, get out of the way. And then he went over to the um uh, elk man and he he extended his hands to shake his hand. And so the elk man thought this was the first time this ever happened to him. Yeah. So he shook see he he's up to this point the elk man thought he was indefeatable, that he could not be defeated. So he went to shake the elk dreamer's hand and here he disintegrated. He was gone. Yeah? What the elk dreamer did was he neutralized the energy. Yeah, so he could not do anything, and then he he was gone. He just disappeared. That was the end of that elk man. See, it's not the same thing. An elk dreamer is not the same thing as an elk man. And so, this is this the now the elk man could be stopped. Yeah, they're stopped by people who are are called elk dreamers. And these are people who who teach emotional uh, healthiness, to live an emotional, healthy life. It's very important because if you're not emotionally healthy, you can become addictive in your thinking. Yeah, that, that you know, it's easy to, to trick you and, and you could lead in, you could fall into very dangerous predicaments like these girls were tricked by this elk man so that was the end of that one yeah and that one was no more so this is this is why it's so important when you're looking for a partner that you should check yourself first are you like these women who just jump at the chance of a good looking guy and be he walks a certain way and he just you know talks all macho and and tries to influence you in a certain way hey come here and, you know blah 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 let's go let's go dance let's go whatever whatever and and then you know are you focusing only on that or are you saying hey wait a minute i'm going to see what kind of guy this is first or do you, or are you smart enough and say I can tell he's an asshole already and <laughs> just turn around. You see what I mean? Your emotional well being, the level of your emotional well being will will help you in recognizing these kind of people. Because a lot of men are this way. Yeah? Especially in the dualistic world that we live in. See the elk men are literally embodiments of duality they they act i mean they are vic, uh, uh, oppressors and sometimes they can appear like a victim yeah to get the the attention of women so they're really tricky yeah they're really really tricky so that's the question you have to ask yourself are you like those girls or are you are you emotionally healthy <laughs> 